Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Totally PLC Investor presentation. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time using the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your question at any time and press send. And if we could ask for those questions, please, to be specifically relating to the acquisition of Energy Fitness, we would be most grateful. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet company dashboard and we'll send you an email when they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we would like to submit the following poll and if you give that your kind attention, we would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand over to CFO Lisa Barter and CEO Wendy Lawrence. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the introduction and thank you to everybody for joining us this morning, um, taking the time to, to, to listen to our presentation about our recent acquisition of energy fitness professionals, of which you will pick up from us during the presentation how excited we are about this. Um, so without further delay, um, we've, we've got a little bit of a presentation from you. So you've got myself, Wendy Lawrence, and Lisa will be chipping in as we, as we go through. Um, so without further delay, you will have read the, the RMS last week. Um, Totally has been saying that we are acquisitive on our buy and build strategy and uh, we were thrilled to get this one um, announced um, ahead of Christmas. So Energy Fitness Professionals are a corporate fitness provider uh, established oh, uh, quite a few years ago now, but are actually known as a very, very high quality provider of the services that, that they, they provide in, in workplaces. Um, in their current services, uh, they not only do gym design and gym management, but they've also got digital services that support physical and mental well-being in the workplace. And we all know that during the pandemic, uh, lockdowns, different ways of working, the actual need for those kind of services has increased time and time again. And certainly uh, employers, large employers, are actively looking now at how they can support employees to get back into the workplace and actually take care of themselves before they become ill and before they become dependent on other healthcare services. So for us at Totally, this is really, really important for us. So energy fitness professionals, um, the, the, the two directors of, of uh, EFP are really excited to join Totally and we know that bringing their skills and their experience and their expertise into our group will not only help us to grow what they've traditionally done, but then actually take that and, and expand services going forward. So upon acquisition, uh, they've got a good, strong customer base, uh, large corporates, central government departments, universities and colleges and with universities and colleges the gyms are open for university staff but also students so a massive customer base um i'll shut up for a minute and let lisa talk to you about the financials um just to give you that overview thanks wendy so uh, the uh, EFP they have a uh, year end that's coterminous with ours which is always helpful uh 31st of march um revenue of a million and uh, profit before tax just over four hundred thousand. gross assets there of, of just over a million uh noting that that is before we, we did the deal and the exclusion of, of cash and debt so we've got a nice healthy business as it is uh working capital is around about 40 grand positive which, uh, which is also uh, useful for us. And uh, we're expecting really to not focus, certainly today or, or, or going forward, on the figures of EFP and the, the performance of their, their core business because we're really excited to, to, to get on and, and look at the digital uh, platform and the development of that. So these, these figures are, for us at the moment, considered to be somewhat uh, irrelevant given that our focus is on the development of those digital services. Um, the performance of EFP is expected to exceed pre-COVID revenue levels when the gyms are, are back at full capacity. Uh, so they are they are working at the moment with a lot of EFP clients include employers of, of key workers. So business has continued and it is growing with the recent commencement of a, of a brand new contract with another well-known company. Um, so we do appreciate that with 
the new strains of the COVID virus. And we've got some remaining caution uh, around what announcements might come in the following weeks, particularly around the leisure and, and hospitality. And so that activity may take some months to recover back to pre-COVID levels. And that's why we've based the earn out on the year ended the 31st of March, 23. So we are primarily, and, and I think we agree rightly, focusing on the development of, of the investment that we've made and the multiple opportunities that, that moving into online technology is going to bring us. We have committed to the vendors we'd invest 500,000 um, to develop their online service uh, and we'll, we'll, we will commit further funds. And I think that there's a bit of that later on in the, in the presentation, but I thought if I just cover all the numbers, numbers now, um, so, you know, that's our focus. That's our goal to succeed in developing a far reaching and, and accessible online well-being product and service. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Lisa. So we'll, we'll move on and, and all of those topics we'll, we'll pick up on. Um, so background and, and rationale for the acquisition. So, as I've already said, uh, we know that there is a growing market for physical and mental uh, well-being. There is an increased focus on employee well-being and mental health and certainly during the pandemic in our other parts of the business uh, within the totally group um, that's the, the the need for mental health services mental health support and the general well-being to get people back into the workplace when we know everything that's been that's been going on for for almost two years now um, we know that hybrid working is likely to become the norm so whether people can get into gyms or indeed want to go into gyms, um, there is an increase of virtual and flexible solutions to that. And certainly energy fitness professionals have been working throughout the period with some of their existing customers, looking at what those solutions may be. So supporting people via technology to ensure that they can access services that are there to support employee wellbeing and mental health. And that is where we at Totally see ourselves being able to support EFP very quickly uh, to take those services to the next level. Obviously for us as well, it's given us access to a strong contract portfolio. Now we haven't named any of uh, EFP's existing contracts purely because we haven't got permission yet off their, uh, off their uh, customers. And so we will, as we start working with those and get that introduction in the relationship, we will obviously um, update investors, but obviously we have to support them as well as anything else and not put EFP in a difficult position. So, but please be reassured from us, they work with blue chip companies um, and it's, it's very, very exciting. So it gives us access to corporate health and wellbeing market, which is a new area for us and a potential to expand relationships with additional services. So when you look at what traditionally EFP have been doing with physical health and working on, on supporting mental, well, mental health wellbeing, um, if you look at what else we do in Totally and as Totally Group, you can see some synergies within that where we can not only help with the growth of EFP, but some of what EFP do can help with some of the Totally customers in some of our other uh, divisions. So for us, it was a, a fantastic opportunity. And it also starts to balance the uh, portfolio of NHS contracts. Before this acquisition, you will be aware that the majority of of our work was secured via NHS, NHS in England, but also other contracts with other uh, with other health uh, commissioners across the UK. So it gives us an opportunity just to expand that base a little bit, and obviously, as the business grows, um, it will it it will balance that further. It also helps us with the development of a digital footprint aligned with existing services. Um, you will see there's some stats um, that we've included from a 2020 survey. So 25% of sickness absences align with mental health or musculoskeletal problems. So actually having solutions to both of those, we are already a large provider of musculoskeletal solutions. And you'll know that we've got our own technology supporting, uh, you know, the recovery and access over to physiotherapists with our physio app. So actually bringing all of that together is really exciting for us. Um, we also have the existing EFP digital offering, which provides a foundation for virtual and flexible physical and mental wellbeing platforms. So um, that is why within the acquisition, you will see that we have committed 
to an initial 500,000 into that, that digital development. Um, and if we need more, we'll, we'll put more in. It's very, very important for us that, that we expand that offering because the demand is there right now. Also creates new service offering for existing customers. So we would, as ever with all of our businesses, look to cross-sell, upsell, uh, cross-introduce. And in fact, we've already had an inquiry from one of EFP's existing customers um, around some additional services that we might be able to offer. And we certainly didn't foresee that within the first few days. Um, so again, really exciting for us. So acquisition, um, there's a, a screenshot there from, from some of the work that, that EFP already do. So owned equally by two founders, uh, Rob and Alan, we've got to know really well during the, uh, the, the process for the acquisition. Um, and uh, I think I'm okay to say this, but I think it, it will actually add something to, uh, to, to your confidence about the way that we do acquisitions. Uh, Bob Holt and myself actually met Rob and Alan back in 2016 when we were uh, very early on in the journey of uh, buy and build for Totally. And uh, EFP were looking at whether that was the right time to sell. And I think through conversations with ourselves and others, they decided they've got a little bit more work to do on that to get growth and, and value. But we've, we've kept in touch with Rob and Alan. Um, and so when they did start to look at... Um, you know the partnering up for for their next move and to grow um they saw totally as the place that they wanted to go not only because of our uh success with the business so far um but also the people and the confidence that they had that that we were the right the right home for a business that they're very very proud of and and have put years and years into growing um lisa's already touched around the uh financials you will have seen that there was a million pounds on completion and then 0.3 million deferred consideration. Um, and again, Lisa explained why that was deferred to the end of 2023. That was just to build in some resilience about whatever um, the government need to do in terms of uh, further management of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, the more we build as an online offering, uh, the less direct impact that EFP will get. But, but we're working with them. They're very busy at the moment. Um, they during the period that we were talking to them in exclusivity, um, they secured a new contract that's now being mobilised. And again, we will look to name those those contracts when we can. And the full achievement of that that um, earn out the the 0 0.3 is continued uh, contingent on EFP's trading returning back to pre pandemic profits. So you can see why we put a little bit of time in there, and also the additional funds to develop Health Hub into a leading leading market offering so um you know that the, the the work has only just begun really you know getting the acquisition done and bringing them into the group was the the first step for us on on doing something really really um exciting for totally and i do have to say uh the leadership teams in the rest of the divisions were uh, as excited as we were when they learned about this because obviously they, they they didn't know about it before either so the outlook um we now want to maximise the benefit from that acquisition, a uh, combination of what their offering is into the corporate market and Tokyo's expertise in healthcare, creates a much more of a holistic offering that can help employees stay healthy and excer access expert healthcare when they need it most. So it's a little bit of a shift for us. The, the majority of the, the Totally businesses are focused on treating ill health so this gives us an opportunity to work on um, increasing well-being and helping people to support their, their own well-being and as well as large employers. It offers opportunities to tra transform the group um, in many existing services, whether that's clinical, physical and well-being. That new digital offering is something that we've talked about for some time and we believe that this is, this is really exciting for us. Um, just to confirm to everybody, uh, we have said we are acquisitive on buy and build. This acquisition is one of a number of bolt-on businesses at the advanced stage of discussion. Um, I did say I was hopeful to update you all this financial year, and I did. Uh, me, we, we may well be able to update further within this financial year, and I can confirm to you again that anything we do, we will be looking at doing it from existing cash balances. We are not at this time looking to raise money um, in the market. 
and again bringing further earnings enhancing opportunities to the group. Um, that is a quick skate through of the acquisition. Um, that's the end of our presentation. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you again for for joining us today. That's great. Lisa, Wendy, thank you very much indeed for updating investors. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen. But just why Lisa and Wendy take a few moments to review those questions submitted already, I'd like to remind you the recording of this presentation, along with the copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your Investor Meet company dashboard and you will receive an email when that's ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you that your feedback as ever is important to the company and immediately after this presentation has ended, we'll redirect you for the opportunity to provide feedback in order that the company can really better understand your thoughts, views and expectations. Um, Lisa, Wendy, obviously we did receive a number of questions uh, ahead of today's event, which you very kindly provided a written response, which we'll make available uh, shortly after the call. But perhaps if I may, investors have submitted a number of questions uh, during today's presentation. If I could ask you just to read out those questions and give a response where it's appropriate and I'll pick up from you at the end. Yep, thank you. I'm very happy to do that. Andrew, I can see you've asked a, a few questions on here. Um, thank you. Um, I think I've touched on most of them during the presentation, but I, but I will go over them and we'll um, we'll try and answer as, as many as we can for you. So uh, the first question, um, Andrew, will, will any future acquisitions be funded from existing cash? Yes, that is our absolute intention. Um, we are cash generative, as you know, and uh, we will be looking to do future acquisitions from from our own resources and no plans to raise money. Uh, there's another question from Michael D. How competitive was the bidding process for energy fitness and how long before it's fully integrated? Um, we didn't go through a bidding process for EFP. Um, I think I already touched on it. Bob and I were introduced to Rob and Alan a few years ago and we've kept in touch. Um, they came to us, um, oh, six seven months ago and Lisa and I started talking to them where the business where the business was and what their plans were and we got very excited about the stuff that they've done since we were introduced um and so we gained exclusivity with them um how long before it's fully integrated now this one's a little bit different for us so we will be integrating into back office obviously so financial functions hr functions um all of the it integration that will take part. It won't take us very long because they're a relatively small business. And um, in fact, I know Lisa's already already got that um, in hand in terms of how it's going to work. So a very, very short integration process. I would certainly think by the end of the financial year, what we are going to integrate will be fully integrated. Um, Henry N, it seems like you paid a fantastic price for, for EFP. Was it competitive? Why do you think you got it for such a good price? Um, again, Henry, I, I think it's a case of uh, relationships and, and partnerships. We think we paid a fair price for EFP uh, based on where they are right now. And the guys that have, that have come across, Rob and Alan, are as excited about us as the investment into technology and what that might bring. And it's up to us now to incentivize them within the business to make sure that they they remain uh, hungry for this as we do. So um, that's the challenge for us now. But, you know, it was a fair price. They, they like us, believe that the opportunity of joining together was bigger than the, the two things separately. So that's where we'll be focusing our energies. Um, Andrew, again, uh, will we be cross-selling physiotherapy into these companies? Uh, I think the simple answer is we'll be cross-selling as many things as we can within intercompany, and I think there will be opportunities going both ways. Um, we've always done that within our divisions. If there are introductions to commissioners that we believe would be beneficial to commissioners and ourselves, uh, we've always done it, and we certainly will be. And we've already got that technical platform for uh, physiotherapy at the moment with PhysiTrack and uh, we'll be looking at how we how we bring those together but they take different brains to mind that's my that's my digital team and my digital experts that will be looking at how we do that but yes obviously there are some uh, early wins we think with physiotherapy and the management of musculoskeletal condition musculoskeletal conditions um to keep uh, people at work uh michael d are robert and alan remaining in the business yeah absolutely you bet they are um as I say, they are as excited about this as we are. Uh, they will be continuing to run um, EFP 
um, but obviously with part of the group and, and our strength and positivity behind it. So, um, yeah, Rob and Alan, uh, they, because we've known them for so long, I think the relationship has developed to a stage where we can hit the ground running. And certainly um, for Lisa and, and myself, there was a, um, a certain amount of uh, positive and reassurance because we've known them for so long that this was absolutely the right thing to do. Um, so yeah, very much so they're staying in the business. Uh, Jonathan B, uh, sounds like a great acquisition. Congratulations on closing the deal, thank you. Do you plan to reorientate further away from dependence on NHS commissioning contracts? Um, I don't think there's a yes or a no to that, Jonathan. So one of the things that I would like to reconfirm is um, the NHS and whether that be in England, Scotland, Wales or, or, or Ireland, um, they are great contracts to have. They are great payers. They pay us within months for the work that we do. We know when the money's coming in. They're never likely to go bankrupt because they're a government body. And so for us, they are absolutely solid contracts. And it wasn't a it wasn't an absolute, oh, we must diversify and bring in different commissioners for us. But obviously, as you diversify and you widen that platform, it does bring benefits to you. And when we are able to update you on who the customers are for EFP, um, I think you will be very impressed by that because there is a mixture of private and uh, public organisations who have national footprints. So again, slightly different and you've also got some very large very impressive blue chip employers in there um that do bring in a different platform for us but it wasn't we didn't go out looking for acquisitions that would do that but obviously it's a it's a benefit from it that that it also brings us that opportunity and that cross selling and cross introduction opportunity um as i say is, is much bigger than than what you just see on the face of it so when we can can update you we will, um, but but please, please be reassured that um, NHS contracts are a, a very, very good place for any business to actually be in. Um, and certainly when you are going through a pandemic and are being asked to do lots and lots of different work for them. Um, Andrew, again, what other areas will the future acquisitions be in? Now, you know as well as I do that I can't, I can't give you information on acquisitions, but um, what I will do is I'll reconfirm what I said the last time that we updated you on the back of the interims that we will be looking to expand into areas where we know that demand has increased, whether that be through the pandemic as a result of the pandemic or just a side issue that's impacting on people such as mental health and well-being. And that if there are businesses out there, yeah, it's just come back with another question, lol. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a nice try, though, Andrew. Um, the, um, what we will be doing, if there are opportunities that are presented to us to move forward and expand areas of the business quickly, so if there's an acquisition out there that's a bolt-on that could help me deliver the higher demand in any part of my existing business, of course I will look at those. Um, so we're not restricting ourselves through tunnel vision. If there are things in there that offer us new opportunities, if there are things in there that we can see new markets that we could react to, or indeed if there are uh, acquisitions out there that are those good quality things that we can bring in that would help us to grow existing parts of the business quickly, then that's what we will do. Malene, thank you. Uh, another question from Malene. I might have missed it, but I don't think I saw Alan B or Canaccord upgrade their earnings estimates post the acquisition. Is that totally being conservative? Um, what we what we haven't done is revised our forecast, Malene, on the back of this. It was um, for us in the overall uh, size of the business, EFP is very, very small. Uh, what we will be doing is obviously reviewing that when we come up to the end of the financial year. We're only three months away. Um, so what Allenby and Canaccord both did was to refresh their notes with the acquisition update. But we'll obviously be working with them going forward. I hope that answers that question, Malene. Lisa, Wendy, thank you very much indeed. It looks like you've taken uh, from investors today. So thank you very much indeed for, for that. And of course, if any further questions do come in, uh, Lisa, Wendy, we'll obviously make those available to you post the meeting. Um, 
I know investor feedback is important to you guys, and I'll shortly redirect investors to give you their thoughts and expectations. But before doing so, Wendy, I wondered if I could just hand back to you, please, for a few closing comments. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I mean, finally, I would just like to say thank you to all of you, not only taking the time to meet with us today, which I hope has been um, useful for you, but thanking you for your ongoing support. Um, we've all been through a couple of years where it's been very difficult, no matter what businesses we're working on or us as individuals and family. Um, and certainly for Totally as a wider group, we're just entering the busiest time um, of the year for us, um, aside from any pandemic. So um, I hope that today you will take away how excited we are about this acquisition and the opportunities that it provides. I hope also that the questions that we've answered um, have given you the insight that you need to understand where we plan to go next, um, what we're doing and the future plans for Totally. So thank you once again. And, you know, it wouldn't be complete, even though I'm sitting here in my sparkly jumper for me to say and wish you all a, a very Merry Christmas and hopefully that uh, 2022 will be a good year for all of us. So thank you again for all of your support and attending today. That's great. Lisa, Wendy, thank you once again for your presentation and updating investors this morning. Can I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This may take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team at Totally PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. Good morning to you all.